Hello, GLD students. I hope that you are staying safe and you are finding fun ways and safe ways to keep yourself learning as we are outside of school for the next few weeks. On behalf of Mrs. Freeman and I, I will be reading a book to you called The Noisy Paint Box. The Colors and Sounds of Vasily Kandinsky's Abstract Art. What's interesting about this book is that we will be learning a lot about who Vasily actually was. Um, he was a real artist, as well as a very special medical phenomenon that is extremely rare in the world today. So let's get started. The Noisy Paint Box. Vasya Kandinsky spent his days learning to be a proper Russian boy. He studied bookfuls of math, science, and history. He practiced piano scales to the marching click of a metronome. He sat stiff and straight at dressed up dinners while the grown-ups talked and talked and talked. Vasya's well-off world was perfectly polite until the day his aunt gave him a small wooden paint box. Every proper Russian boy should appreciate art, said Auntie. She showed Vasya the correct way to mix colors on the paint box palette. Vasya mixed red with yellow then he mixed red with blue. As the colors changed, Vasya heard a whisper. Hiss. Louder. Hiss. Then louder still. Hiss. What's that sound? Asked Vasya. I don't hear a thing, said Auntie. Vasya listened as his brush stirred and swished. The swirling colors trilled like an orchestra tuning up for a magical symphony. Mama, Papa, called Vasya. What a noisy paint box. Silly Vasily, said Papa. Stop being foolish, said Mama. Vasya painted the sound of the colors. He spun a bright lemon circle onto the canvas. It clinked like the highest notes on the keyboard. He brushed a powerful navy rectangle that vibrated deeply like the lowest cello strings. He tossed up jagged swashes of blaring crimson and added cheerful dots of burbling green, clanging orange and tinkling violet. Vasya painted and painted until the colors went quiet. Look what I made, Vasya shouted. Is it a house? asked Auntie. Is it a flower? asked Mama. What's it supposed to be? asked Papa. It's music said Vasya, waltzing his painting around the house. Calm down, said Mama. Do some math, said Papa. Heavens, said Auntie, this boy needs a proper art class. So Vasya went to art class and learned to draw houses and flowers just like everybody else. As the years passed, Vasya finished school and studied to be a lawyer. He ignored his noisy paint box and lived the way people expected. But Vasya couldn't ignore the sounds of the colors singing to him in the streets of Moscow. The canary yellow mailbox whistling as he rode to work. The scarlet sunset haze ringing above the ancient Kremlin walls. An ivory chorus of snowflakes scattered on the sable collar of his overcoat.
One evening, suitably steamed and starched, Vasya attended the opera. As the orchestra's music crashed around him, the colors of the noisy paint box twirled wildly in his mind. Stomping lines of vermilion and coral, caroling triangles in pistachio and garnet, thundering arches of aqua and ebony with shrill points of cobalt and saffron. Basia heard the colors singing. Basia saw the music dancing. And Vazia was never quite as proper again. He quit his job teaching law and moved from Moscow to Munich to be a painter. He studied with this famous teacher and then that one. Vazia wanted to paint the colors he heard, but maybe the famous teachers knew best. Once again, Vazia put houses and flowers and animals and people into his paintings, just like everyone expected. The teachers were happy. Vazia was not. His artist friends understood. They too were tired of painting pretty landscapes and pretty ladies. They thought art needed to change. Art should make you feel, Vazia told them, like music. Exactly, said his friends, but none of them knew how to paint feelings until the day Vazia grew brave enough and invited the world to see the paintings roaring from his noisy paint box. Snapping cerulean points, crunching crimson squares, whispering charcoal lines. Vazia named these paintings after the music he loved. Improvisation, composition, accompaniment, fugue, movement, and simply three sounds. With his noisy paint box, Vazia Kandinsky created something entirely new, abstract art. It took a long time for people to understand. Is it a house? Is it a flower? What's it supposed to be? It's my art, Vazia answered. How does it make you feel? That's the end of the book. Now I'm gonna read a little bit to you about who Vasily Kandinsky actually was. Vasily Kandinsky was born in Moscow, Russia in 1866. His father, also named Vasily, was a wealthy tea merchant and his mother, Lydia, was a noblewoman with a passion for music. Vasily, or Vazia, as he often was called, traveled with his family to Italy and then to Odessa, Russia on the shore of the Black Sea for his father's health. When he was five, his parents divorced and Vazia lived with his aunt Elizabeth while finishing school. He attended law school in Moscow, then taught law and economics as an adult. This book is what we call historical fiction. The dialogue is imagined, although the events are true. In his writings, Kandinsky described hearing a hissing sound as a child when he first mixed colors in the paint box his aunt gave him. He continued experiencing colors as sounds and sounds as colors throughout his life. It's thought that Kandinsky probably had a harmless genetic condition called synesthesia. Although accurate tests to detect it weren't invented during his lifetime. In people with synesthesia, one sense triggers a different sense, allowing them, for example, to hear colors, see music, taste words, or smell numbers. Scientists believe those with synesthesia may have more pathways between the sense areas in the brain or that their senses communicate in ways other people's do not. 
There are at least 60 different types of synesthesia and it's estimated to occur in one out of every 5,000 individuals. So it's extremely rare. As an adult, Kandinsky attended an exhibition of Claude Monet's Haystacks. The painting stunned him. It was the first time he saw art that was not realistic and he never forgot that experience. Here are some other examples of uh, Vasily Kandinsky's abstract art, which can be found in New York, Chicago, Paris, and Germany, and of course, Russia. What's interesting about synesthesia is that, um, again, it can be broken up into almost 60 different types. And one of the least famous types is called chromesthesia, which in this case is sound to color. There are other famous musicians that we know of that um, have inferenced that they have this wonderful phenomenon. Franz Liszt, who was a romantic composer, Leonard Bernstein, who wrote, um, oh my goodness, what is it called? West Side Story, there we go. Uh, Jean Sibelius was a French composer, and some others that we are familiar with are Duke Ellington and Hans Zimmer. Oftentimes people who have chromesthesia can break it into categories based on different colors that they see. Some might see more orange and yellow or red. Some might see more blue, green, and maybe even purple or pink. Again, it's extremely rare. Only about two to 4% of people in the entire world have this condition. And it's even more rare when you're just looking at chromesthesia. So Mrs. Freeman and I wanna challenge you. Over the next few days, today, tomorrow, next week, maybe even the week after, sit down with some paper, grab some colored pencils, crayons, paint, chalk even. Put on your favorite music and see what you can create. What colors do you think you hear? What colors could you envision the song being? Share your art with us when we come back to school. See you soon.